Hello, everyone, and welcome to another IFN interview. I'm Ruello, and today I'm joined by the one and only, the Argentinian King. How are you doing, man? Yes, sir. AK is here. He ain't going anywhere anytime soon, so I'll be around. Don't worry. I'm all right. How about yourself? You doing all right? I'm doing great, man. Thank you. So let's get straight to it then. Can you introduce yourself to the audience for the people that may not know about you? Um, yeah, so I'm Argentinian King. I'm from Argentina, probably one of the most hated, hated guys now on Twitter. People, you know, been hating a little bit, but um, yeah, I just fought on Misfits. I box like trash, but it is what it is. We move on. We got the W, so we, we move on to the next one. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So how did you get into the crossover boxing scene exactly? Um, so I lived in LA for a year. Uh, I lived in the US for two years, actually. And one, one year I was in LA. And um, there uh, I was training with B-Dave, actually, um, in one gym that a couple of celebrities used to train. So that's how I got introduced to the influencer boxing scene. And then I happened to get into Misfits like a year afterwards. So yeah, that's how I got into it. That's great to hear. So last month, as you said, you fought on Misfits 14 against Pully Arif in the quarterfinals of the lightweight tournament. So you won your fight in a bit of a controversial decision. What were your thoughts on that fight exactly? I think it's bullshit. I mean, I rewatched the fight like, probably four times now. And I don't think, I don't see like the controversy. I mean, I won fair and square. I think, mm -hmm. you know, the broad, the broadcast was against me uh, and they were calling all his shots. And literally a couple of times I, I hit him with like good shots and they didn't say anything. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I box like trash and it's my fault. I mean, there's no excuses from my side. Like I said, after the fight, I mean, you know, my, my performance was awful, but, you know, I'm not going to put mm. any excuses. I take my hat off to Puli. He boxed a better fight that all of us saw he would. And yeah, I mean, it is what it is. A win is a win and we move on. I was not happy after a fight, even in the locker room and stuff. I was like kind of sad because I know my potential and I know what I can do. And that was awful. <laughs> like, mm. honestly, it was awful. So I remember like after a fight, I came back to a locker room and my whole team was there, my family was there, and I was like, went into the, the battle test. Um, and I was like kind of sad because I, I knew that Damn. I underperformed. And uh, my, my whole team was telling me like, come on, like change your face, like you, you won, like, like, let's just move on, let's celebrate. Your family's here, your friend is here. Uh, mm. But I just, you know, I'm a competitor and uh, you know, I, I don't like how, how I box and it is what it is, uh, I think. It was my first time under the lights. Also, like my last fight. I mean, I have amateur fights, right? And everyone mm. is aware of it. But my last yeah. fight was like seven years ago. So. Oh damn. Yeah, it was a long time without fighting, and it's just tough to like warm up. And that's what I also did better as the rounds went by. Like four and five uh, were my better, my best rounds. And you know, it, it is what it is. I had to break the ice, and and it, it, yeah. It, it, it happened the way it happened so yeah yeah i have another opportunity now and i think i'm fighting yarigang next it's a fight that i always wanted to fight and uh it is, it's time for me to prove not just i mean i know what i can do so i don't have to prove anything to mm -hmm. myself but i gotta prove something to everyone else that is what i got so I think this time around is just the 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 perfect time because even if I knocked fully out in one round, nobody would have given me any props. Mm. So it, it 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 doesn't really matter how the last time, the last fight was going to be. Nobody was gonna say anything because you know Puli got the fight, took the fight in seven days, and you know whatever. So yeah, yeah now I think now is the perfect time. So okay, and talking about the Puli fight. What were some of the things that you think you did wrong during that fight? And what do you think you could have done better? Um, I should have let my hands go way more, but he was awkward. So every time that I was trying to hit him, he, he would just grab me or he would just run away. So I didn't cut the rim properly. That's 
you know, something that I should have done better. And I didn't use my job a lot. I, I think I should have used my job a lot to get like the distance and cut, cut off the ring better. Mm. Uh, but it is what it is. I mean, you live and you learn. And it was my first time under the lights and it's never easy. I'm 24 years old, um, fighting like, you know, in a country that is not Argentina. And I, I did have a lot, a lot of pressure coming into this fight. I had to win for myself. I, like I need to win. So it, it was a lot to like handle uh, at this age. And, you know, I did what I could that, you know, uh, yeah. I had a great training camp and I gave my best. So like people don't get it, but the, you, you all gotta remember like three months before the fight, I was doing DoorDash for a living and then my life changed. And, um, mm. you know, all the pressure that comes with it is not easy to handle. And, you know, especially the first time. So that's what I, it's good that, at least I got the dab and we move on. Definitely. So talking about the lead up to this fight, you broke a Misfits record for having four unfortunate pullouts for Misfits 14. Those being Tasmanian Devil, Meals with Max, APAP, and Britain's Worst Boxer. Do you think these pullouts affected you in any way during the fight? I mean, I, I would assume so. I guess uh, I came into this fight without a, you know, a, a game plan. I just, you know, step in the ring and, uh, you know, I just figure out uh, as the time, as the rounds uh, went by. So, you know, it's always better if you go into a ring with a game plan and you have try time to exactly. prepare. It, it was just uh, like weird, like in a sense, because when I was, uh scheduled to fight a pop he was a southpaw so mm -hmm. it was like two or three days in training camp that we like change everything uh and then oh, they're wow. like oh a pop is out so Damn. that's but crazy to, to be fair though i mean it, it was my fault the way i i perform uh that the only person that is responsible is myself and um you know again i did what i could uh, and i gave my best that's for mm -hmm. sure uh, it's never easy, but I think I think I'll get better as the fights go by. Also, like it's you know it's a lot to handle. It's not easy to uh, to perform under the bright lights. Mm. So you mentioned your training camp. Um, how long was your training camp exactly? Oh, it was fucking hell. I think it was even more than three months because I got announced into a tournament February six. Mm -hmm. And the fight was May 11th. And by the time I got announced, I was already in camp for like a week. So, yeah, it was three months and a half. And the thing with like long training camps, I mean, it's good because I improve a lot. Although, although I couldn't show it, um, I did improve mm -hmm. a lot. Um, but with long camps, um, you get injured as the camp go by because like they're, they're very tough. Especially like before that, I was not, the, I was not an athlete. So I changed my whole life. So, you know, and my body like did what my body could do, but yeah, I got injured. Like I, I remember, like twenty five days before the fight. I'm not putting any oh, excuses, wow. way. but the one that should have pulled out was myself, not all the other guys, because I was fucking injured before the fight. Damn. Um, but you know that's what happened when you have a long training camp. And this time around, uh, with my next fight. I know what, what I got to do uh, to get in tip-top shape. Because, you know, mm -hmm. we made mistakes, me and my team, just because it was the first time. So, I mean, it was probably my fault, most of it, because my team is super experienced, but still. Mm. Who do you train with exactly now? So, now I'm in Argentina. Uh, I just got here yesterday. So, uh, my training nice. camp is starting tomorrow. Um, we got a fight in August, so the final is going to be December. But that's Ooh, my guess. Exciting. Guess. Yeah. Very it's exciting. my guess though. It's nothing official. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um for sure. So yeah, I had to take like time off after a fight because I was injured. So I have like injuries to help. Um and I took three weeks, probably was way too long. I was running still, but you know, eating a lot. So I have to mm. start training next week. Uh tomorrow. And yeah. Yeah. Now I'm in Argentina, by the way. And then I do the first part of the training come here and then i go to america to finish it with my coach uh, nice he's a professional boxer uh former olympian and he's fighting also in july so 
right after that, we're going to start training them. Awesome, man. Talking about Misfits 14, what were your thoughts on the rest of the fights of the card? I couldn't watch anything because uh, that's weird. I watched the last fight, uh, Sol Papi one. I love Sol Papi, by the way. He's my guy. Um, w Sol Papi. Like, first... Huh? W Salt Poppy. Yeah, he's For a sure. goat. Uh, but then, like, there are the rest of the car, I couldn't watch it because I had to do like the Bada test afterwards. I don't know mm. how to say it in English. Uh, anyway, the doping test. Yeah, yeah. So it, it takes a long because you, you gotta pee, and right after a fight, it's just kind of like you, you don't want to pee, and you just gotta yeah, take a lot of water. Exactly. And it takes an hour or so. So I couldn't oh, watch damn. anything. It was a good, a good, um, a good card though. Mm. I did watch Mrs. Wow. 15, way, but I didn't watch my card. Mm. What were your thoughts on um, Miss Fitz 15? So I watched, I think, the main event, and I also watched, um, of course, Yarigang against Little Craig Craig because I was supposed to fight them. Mm -hmm. And I was in night at the moment, I was in an RB doing like so I do travel content, like to put context for the people that are watching. Um, I'm an influencer from Argentina. My, my content is in Spanish and I do like travel content and stuff. So I had to like plan something after a fight to create content. So I went to Iceland for like two weeks and that's when Misfits 15 happened. And we had like a lot of time difference. So I, I, I fell asleep um, during the fight. And then Damn. I got up, I think at four in the morning or something. And when I got up, I opened Twitter. I'm like, all right, I just want to see who am I fighting next? Because I knew that I was going to fight the winner of that fight. And when I saw that, like, Yarigan pulled that off, I'm like, oh, my God. I did not expect that. That's for sure. And then I wow. watched the fight. Wow. So, as you just mentioned, now that you won your fight, you have advanced to the semifinals of the lightweight tournament. And you're taking on Yarigan next. How does that fight go? It'll be a war. And unless he runs away like a bitch, he, probably he will do that after he feels my power. That's for sure. But, you know, I'm a huge underdog. I'm fully aware of that. And that's awesome because there is no pressure from my side this time around. I mean, I, I'm chilling. I'm vibing. I'm enjoying it every time, every moment. And the training camp is going to be amazing. And, you know, me and my team, we're studying Jadigang and we're going to plan a perfect uh, game plan and we're going to pull this off. I know I have the tools. I just underperformed mm. my last fight. So I just got to put my shit together in the next one and it'll be easy work. Great to hear. And about the Yari versus Cray Cray fight, what did you think of uh, Cray Cray's performance during the fight? So I think that it was a close fight. Uh, I don't mind a 3 2 2 either way. I mean, I think Yari and he, he, he fought a great fight, by the way. So he 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 probably deserves the W. And little Craig Craig had like an amazing first round. Mm -hmm. And you know, he showed me the pathway. <laughs> so thanks to him, he showed me the pathway. Now I know how to beat Yadigang. Wow. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that round happened because, you know, now it's easy. I just got to like, you know, work on that. Okay. And do you think that Yuri did enough during the fight? Yes, for sure. It was a close fight. I mean, like I said, uh, I don't mind either of them winning. And um, yeah, I, I think he, he did enough for sure. He, he's a great boxer, by the way. I like Yuri. He, he's a hell of a boxer, a hell of a fighter. And he showed that he can take a punch, I guess. Because Little Cracker is a 126-pounder. And mm. he cannot punch. So he's fast, but he cannot punch. So we don't really know if he can take a punch because he got cracked and he kind of like wobbled a little bit. So we don't really know if he can take a punch, but he did show a lot of heart. So props to him. Okay, great. So in this tournament, who do you think is the biggest threat to you? Yadigan. So the winner of my fight is winning the tournament and then it's beating Dean, that's for sure. So whoever wins this semifinal is it's gonna be the favorite and it's gonna be the guy the guy in the lightweight division. Then yeah, if yeah. they are semifinal, you'll have probably the brain damage kid. Uh what's his name? Wally Shark. He's 18 years old and he, he's got brain damage. Um 
So he's always like one punch away of getting like fucking knocked out. And then you have Joey Knight that, yeah, maybe he, he hits kind of hard, but he's an alcoholic and he's a crackhead. So, you know, he, they, they, they're not even, I don't even know what they're doing in the tournament. Like, please, someone has to stop this. Stop mm. like putting this Wally guy, he's going to get hurt and he's going to end up like, really badly and send like Joey to rehab. I don't know, <laughs> man, come on. Wow. You just mentioned Joey Knight. And I've seen that you've been calling out Joey Knight for a while now. You've been uh, saying that he's stiff, that he can't box. So if you were to fight him later on in the tournament, how do you think that fight would go? I'll knock him out. He's terrible. He's, he, he boxes like a robber that, uh, with his chin up. He's like this. He's always like ready to get hit. Um, we we already know if he can punch or not because in Misfits, you know, he didn't he 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 didn't fight against nobody, uh, so we don't really know if he can actually punch. But um, yeah, I mean, whenever I fight him, I'll knock him out. And like I, I told Jadigan the other day, because he he doesn't like him either. So I'm like, the trophy for this fight is Joey Nice Head, because whoever wins the fight gets a chance to punish that motherfucker. So that's even better than the belt, to be mm -hmm. honest. So you think Joey is going to beat Walid or Ace? Yeah, he probably will beat him. Yeah, hopefully so, because I want to fight him. So hopefully he pulled that off. Mm. Who do you think besides yourself will reach the finals of the lightweight tournament? So it'll be me against hopefully Joey Knight. That's the dream fight. Because also the build-up is going to be amazing. Like he, he likes to talk a lot of shit. Mm. We had like a back and forth in Misfits 14 after a fight. Um, he, and you know what? I am feel like really sorry for the guy because I literally invite him. It was my show, right? It was my mm -hmm. show. I invite him to the ring because I'm a nice person. So I, I gave him a little of screen time and he fucked it up because he was fucking drunk. So they didn't allow him Damn. in the ring because he was drunk. So come on, bro. Like I gave you an opportunity uh, in the most viewed misfits car ever and you just fuck it up because you are an alcoholic so mm. whatever but that fight is going to be a great build up and a great fight and hopefully it happens down the line you said before that the tournament is going to end towards the end of the year um how many times are you planning on fighting next year after the whole tournament um we gotta see i mean i, I like to fight and i like to train uh as long as i don't have like any injuries or something i love to fight like four or five times four or five times next year but i don't know whatever whenever they have a fight they just gotta call me and i'll show up it's easy to make way for me i thought it was gonna be tough honestly uh because i'm a big boy and i walk around like 150 ish or even more and so i'm like oh how the fuck i'm gonna make the way and to be fair it was tuesday and i was already like a pound or something like that. So it was just easy. Mm. But now I went to Italy for a week and I ate like a fucking shit ton of pasta and pizza and stuff. So I just got to, you know, Damn. train a little. Okay. Around. What is your message towards Yadi Gang ahead of your semi-final tournament bout against him? Yadi Gang, the only thing that I'm going to tell you, which is... You know, you've been talking a lot of shit and you think that I'm going to be a walk in the park. Just take the training serious because the only thing that I want is to break your fucking jaw. So just make sure you take training camp serious. Don't go to London because I know he has like a whole vacation plan out and he's not going to come back to a site until the end of June or something. So, oh shit. They did fucked up the whole interview, right? The dogs. Anyway, so yeah, take the <laughs> take the training camp serious and Big Daddy Argentinian King is coming for you. And yeah, I cannot wait to break your fucking jaw. So let's do it. Amazing. So for the last part of this interview, I want to do some quick fire questions. So I have some some fantasy matchups ready. And then I'm just gonna ask you who would win, and then you just give me a concrete answer. Okay? You got it. You got it. So, who wins? KSI 
or Amir Khan? KSI. He'll knock him up. Wow. Jake Paul or Mike Tyson? Hopefully yeah. that's not happen. Like someone has to stop that shit. Mm. Like Mike, I lo we all lo love Uncle Mike, but he's like 60 something. Please, like, come on. Uh, I gotta say Jake Paul, honestly, because he's younger. And mm. yeah, it, it hurts, but Jake is gonna win. Okay. Then KSI or Jake Paul? I gotta say my boss, I'm gonna get fired. So let's say, <laughs> yeah. No, but I do think he's gonna fight. He's gonna win, by the way. Um, early on, you know, Jay Paul was taking the sport maybe a little more serious, but now he's like fucking fat. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, KSI has a lot of, uh, he's very athletic. So, and he's awkward as well. So I think he'll pull that off. I don't think that he's going to knock him out though, because both of them can take a punch. But it'll be a fun fight. And yeah, I think it's got to happen like for, for the culture, for the community. Definitely. Fox G or Fred Beck? Oh, no, I cannot. They are both my guys. I love them. I love mm. Fox. I love Fred. I cannot answer this question. No. Okay. No. I, I'll go with a draw. But sure. no, man. They, they both great guys, like, honestly. Fred is the guy, and Fox is so humble and so cool. Um, yeah, I almost went out uh, to dinner with Fox the other day. I was in London, but he had to train, and I had to take the flight, so mm. we couldn't uh, arrange. But, yeah, both of them, I like him, so I'm not going to answer that question. Okay. Then, Small Spartan J or Baby Hulk? Uh, oof, that's a banger for fucking fight. I want to see that one. That would be a fun fight. Um, wow. I, I don't know. That's because they're going to just crash. It will be amazing. Um, I think Baby Hall probably is going to be bigger in the night and he can really punch, I guess. But, mm. um, he's an MMA guy. So, you know, boxers usually have the, the advantage. So I'll go with our guy. Okay. Small Spartan J then. Yeah. yeah. Small Spartan J. Yeah. Okay. Then. A tag team between Argentinian King and Small Spartan J versus Pully Arif and Fox the G. <laughs> that'd be fun, actually. That'd be fun. Uh, we will we, we'll win for sure, but that'd be fun. It would be a fun like build up also, like because you mm. know. Uh, by the way, like hat off to Pully. Like he he did like so before we got into the tournament or I got into the tournament. The the lightweight tournament was fucking boring. Like, no one was promoting shit. Everyone was being so polite. Mm. And I got in there, and I started talking my shit, and then the show started, and now everything is, you know, more interesting. And Pully, like, did a great job during the five week with the build-up and everything, so hard off to him. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, amazing. And then, for the final two, Waleed Sharks versus Joey Knight. I'd say Joe and I by knockout. Okay. And then finally, Argentinian King or Yadi Gang TV? Argentinian King by third round knockout with a body shot. And uh, yeah, then everyone will, will have to shut the fuck up and I'll become a superstar. That's how it's going to go. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much for this interview. I really appreciate that you took the time for it. Thank you very much for having me. No problem. And I hope you all enjoyed this interview and we'll see you all in the next one. See ya.